Welcome back to 7 Moons Astrology, where mysticism and science combine. My name is Sarah Kirby, and this is a reading for the lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus, exact on the 8th of November at about 5.02 a.m. Central Standard Time. Now, this one's a total lunar eclipse, which means it's very closely aligned to the nodal axis and results in the Earth's shadow being cast upon the surface of the moon completely, so that the moon will appear a dark red or brownish color. And that's why you'll often hear it referred to as a blood moon. Now, this will actually be visible in the night sky if you live in the North American region or certain parts of Asia. And I'll put a photo on the screen so you can see the eclipse path if you're interested or feel so inclined to get up in the middle of the night, depending on where you live, to view the eclipse, to view the blood moon. But regardless of where you live or if you see the blood moon, the energy will be felt globally. Now, a lunar eclipse is a full moon like any other, so it means all the full moon things. Completion, illumination, clarity, insight, results, manifestation. It's an opposition between the sun and moon, so there's an opportunity to integrate new lessons, new information, and get directional clues about where we should go. But because it's not just any full moon and it's instead a lunar eclipse, and also because it's a total lunar eclipse, which is even more rare, and this time because it's exactly conjunct Uranus, this one is, eclipses have a tendency to be a wild card energy. They can bring more unexpected events or big changes in our life that um, we weren't maybe anticipating. Now, eclipses occur every six months. So are you having life-defining, earth-shattering major changes every six month, months in your life? No, you are not. So who does this affect most? Well, this time with Taurus and Scorpio, it's the fixed signs we've got. You know, this season has been big life-defining change for people who have a lot of fixed sign energy. That's Taurus, that's Leo, that's Scorpio, and that's Aquarius. And anybody who has a lot of personal placements or aspects to the Taurus-Scorpio axis are also going to experience, you know, big upgrades and transformations uh, in their life. But not everybody has that in their chart. And so not everybody gets these like super obvious palpable manifestations of the eclipses. And it can actually be quite subtle and feel like just any other full moon. And so there's nothing to be afraid of. That's message number one. We do not need to fear eclipse season or expect the worst because then we manifest the worst. Now that that spiel is over, I do want to say something about what this eclipse means for the collective. And there's been a lot of talk about this in the astrological online community because this total lunar eclipse happens on election day in the U.S. and the eclipse's path covers the entirety of the U.S. So when you look at uh, traditional astrology, the suggestion was always that eclipses are omens of events and the path that they cross would affect, you know, the nations and the areas accordingly. And this is also important, I think, because the president of the U.S. is a Scorpio sun and a Taurus moon. So it's hitting him pretty directly as well. And um, lots of people have predictions about what this can mean um, financially. Taurus is the sign of money. Lots of people have predictions about what this means for, you know, the government and for politics and who's in power. That's Scorpio. And lots of people have predictions about what this could mean for um, rebellion against the establishment because of its close association with Uranus this time, which is, of course, the, the planet of revolution and um, rebellious change. So we might see, you know, something surprising when it comes to the election results this time around in the U.S., the midterm elections. And we could also see something truly life-defining and changing for Joe Biden. And I actually have his chart here. And you can skip ahead if you're not interested in this stuff. But I just, I had to indulge. I am not a professional mundane astrologer. Okay, I'm a novice at this. This is not what I specialize in. I specialize in uh, personal and evolutionary astrology with a bit of Hellenistic technique. So... These are just my thoughts and opinions. But if you look at the Taurus Scorpio axis for Joe Biden's chart in whole sign houses, he is going to have this right up in his sixth and 12th house energy where he happens to have a stellium in Scorpio. So, you know, this is a big deal for him and could have tangible impact on the nature of his work, which is the sixth house Taurus. And it could have tangible impact on the nature of his health because that's also what the sixth house is. Need I say, say any more about that? I don't know. Just quick snippet. Follow someone else for more of that stuff because I ain't trying to get censored. Anyway, so let's get back to the lunar eclipse in Taurus for us as individuals and what this means. And in order to do that, I need to actually rewind just two weeks to about October 25th when we were having the new moon in Scorpio. 
The new moon in Scorpio set the tone for this entire eclipse season here, and the full moon lunar eclipse is going to give us clarity and realization about what we need to do as a result of what went down about two weeks ago or in this stretch of time between the 25th of October and now approximately. So the new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio was exactly conjunct Venus. Okay, so I spoke a lot about how this was about releasing and reflecting on the past when it comes to toxic people in our lives, toxic food in our lives, toxic things in our lives and in our bodies, things that we need to clear out so that our energy is more peaceful, so that our energy is more calm, so that we can feel more relaxed and enjoy life a little bit more. So stop the rumination about questions you can never answer. Uh, get rid of all the deeply buried subconscious thoughts that are controlling your life because of trauma that you experienced. Get out of debt and stop spending so much money and stop giving away your power to other people financially and learn what kind of beliefs and patterns you have that you are fixating on to control your environment and let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. That's what it was about. And a lot of people lost somebody. A lot of people unexpectedly found that, you know, relationships were changing, financial circumstances were changing, and it has been a season of transformation that is what Scorpio is all about and there was certainly you know some of us feeling like oh okay you know I I'm at peace with what I need to let go of and I'm at peace with the past and I see now and it's okay and I'll let go of what I'm attached to and blah 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 and others had quite a hard time doing that but since this energy has developed and Mercury has joined in Scorpio there has been, you know, a, I think a tendency to s fall back a little bit into old patterns of um, unnecessary worry, rumination and obsession over questions that we have that we really feel like we want to be certain about and um, things that we feel comfortable in that we're, we weren't really ready for those things to change or now we're in this new uncertain territory and it's um, activating and triggering a lot for us that we've been really probably trying to avoid looking at for quite some time. And now we're having to stare it straight in the face. And um, I should start by giving you some more clarity about this full moon on the chart. So first you've got the moon at 16 degrees in the sign of Taurus, exactly conjunct Uranus and very closely conjunct the North Node, opposed by the sun at 16 degrees Scorpio, Venus at 20 degrees, so it's involved still, Mercury 15 degrees, very much so involved, and the south node 13 degrees. And then you've also got Saturn here, which is in a T-square to the whole thing, in the sign of Aquarius. And you're going to see a lot of astrologers talking about how this is a hard chart and there's a lot of things that could be quite problematic around this time. And that's not untrue. But... There's something about this that I just really like. And every time I thought about this energy, I just really liked it. And I didn't really like it in the sense that everything is peachy keen and perfect and wonderful and happy and there are no problems. But I really liked it in the sense that I think we get a big aha moment about what we need to do. And we really get the lesson that we're trying to learn with the North Node in Taurus, which is to slow down, prioritize our peace, respect boundaries, understand what the that we don't need to be in a rush and to focus on being more even keeled, okay? And that tension and pressure has been building from the Uranus Taurus, um, the Uranus Saturn square, and that's breaking up. And we've also got this Scorpio influence that has been so strong this month, which has, I think, like I said, caused us to regress into a bit of worry and rumination and obsessive thinking and trying to control everything and try to fixate on things and either because we like really 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 desire something that we are reaching for or because we are really really afraid of something you know there's two camps of people you're either really pursuing something you very deeply desire scorpio or you're really trying to avoid something that you are really really afraid of happening scorpio and with Mercury here, you're thinking about it a lot. You're thinking about it a lot. You're obsessing on it. You're researching it. You're studying it. You're observing a lot. You are fixated on it. And there can be a lot of questioning here. And it, maybe it has to do with the love or money scenario. Maybe it has to do with personal possessions. Maybe it has something to do with somebody you're in relationship with. Maybe it has something to do with uh, a value system that you've been working on transforming but feel uncertain about. You know, those are all the Venus things, the Venusian things. 
And really what we're supposed to do is be letting go of that now with the south node here and the new moon that set the tone for shedding these things and just being at peace and just relaxing and chilling out a little bit, okay? Just chill because chill is what is going to give you the clarity that you're looking for. And this T-square configuration here says that there's some kind of sudden shocking problem that comes or some kind of burden or responsibility or some event that slows you down, some reason why you have to you know, take longer than you thought you would or work harder for something or change some plan again. And, you know, Saturn can bring a problem to solve. Saturn can bring a responsibility to bear. Saturn can slow things down. Saturn can cause you to have to really be deliberate and responsible about how you structure something or the way that you approach a situation or uh, it's about accountability. It's about taking accountability. Now, many people are not going to do it. And that's where you'll run into problems, okay? Because this T-square is occurring in the fixed signs. When you've got fixed sign T-squares, the problem is a resistance to change, an avoidance of changing, okay? Fixed signs want to stay with what we know. We want to stay with what is comfortable. We want to stay with what is tried and true and traditional and, and what we're feeling safe with, even if it's uh, not the best thing for us. And we want to stick to our methods. But if we rise to the occasion and take an action here, if we rise to the occasion to actually make the change that is being asked for here, because the action is to make the change that is being asked for here. And the change that is being asked for here is to let something go, to release something from the past or something that's deep inside of us that we've been avoiding or some kind of fear that we have that we need to let go of or some kind of obsessive compulsion over something we desire that's really only creating more resistance and getting in our way. Regarding a love, money, value, personal possession, Taurus, Venus thing. Squares are about action and initiation and shit or get off the pot. That's what squares are about. So if you make a choice and you make a decision and you take an action and you make the change that you're really supposed to be making here and just allow it to happen and release the attachment to what is familiar, all these Taurus Scorpio things, then I think that this is actually a really successful time because even if everything externally isn't going your way and you're going to find a way to be at peace with it because the moon is exalted in Taurus. The moon loves to be in Taurus more than any other sign because it's about feeling good and letting things be good and choosing to be peaceful and choosing to be relaxed and choosing to just let things be, be what they are and move at a measured pace and be patient and let the transformation that is occurring within us and within other people to occur as it is occurring. Take the pressure off take the pressure off you want to know how i know that okay also because mars just went retrograde mars just went retrograde mars is our drive our willpower our rush our hurry our ambition our, our do this now our uh make it happen my way my will what i want and in retrograde it's like stop fighting stop comparing stop competing stop fighting stop comparing stop competing And square, this Mars is square, Jupiter and Neptune, okay? And Jupiter just returned to the sign of Pisces here from now until December 20th, which means why are we able to do this now? Because we give it back up to God's plan. Jupiter and Neptune conjunct in the sign of Pisces. We give it back up to God's plan. We say, okay, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of the fighting. I'm tired of the endless striving. I'm tired of the restlessness and the worry and the pushing and the pressure and the, I get it. I need to slow down. I get it. I need to be patient. I get it. I need to stop seeking intense, addictive, tumultuous situations and emotions and just let it be peaceful. Let it be easy. Let it be relaxed. I'll keep on persevering through the problems because you know what? The clarity, the insight, the tension that breaks from this Uranus involvement here is taking responsibility for myself, Saturn, means growing up a little bit and doing the hard things that require me to let go of all my expectations about how I thought things would go and when I thought they would go. 
and give it up to God. And I do think we're going to be able to do that here. I think a lot of people will be able to do that because Venus is also in a wide trine to Neptune and Jupiter here. The benefics are in trine. And that can ensure that even if things look tumultuous on the outside, which they may with this Saturn involvement and the Uranus conjunction, the divine has our back and the plan is taking us exactly towards where we need to go if we can just give it up. Something I should also say about this, though, is that some of the situations that y'all are in, people might not be seeing things clearly, okay? Because the Venus trine, Jupiter and Neptune, and especially with Mars, which is also square to this influence, I, I have to mention that Mars is also square to this influence, there can be some kind of deception, deceit, lying, misinformation, betrayal, um, victim stuff going on. And when I when I say victim stuff, I mean people playing the victim. And, um, you know, kind of martyrdom, woe is me. Maybe people are um, seeing things with rose-colored glasses, maybe they are jumping in um, two feet first without any tangible plan, and the skipped step, which is another way of looking at the Saturn influence here, is that they didn't really think about, you know, responsibilities or consequences. That could be happening here, okay, but, and maybe it's you, and you don't even know it because you're la-di-da, or maybe it's someone you care about, or maybe it's some financial risk, or maybe it's something, okay, but you, you might not really know what you're fully getting into. Okay, fine. Maybe it's going to take longer than you think. Give it up to God. That's what this energy is about. And the moon exalted in Taurus, I think, is able to make the realization and the clarity and snap out of the obsession and the rumination for a second here and step into, okay, like maybe change isn't so bad. And maybe not being able to control this is fine because maybe I'm not supposed to be controlling it anyway. And maybe I need to worry about keeping myself more even so that I can continue to heal instead of being so intense all the time and up and down and working with extremes or thinking about things in such a black and white way. Because the other thing that happens with Mercury and Scorpio is that we're like obsessively searching for an answer to a question that's going to make us feel at peace when really what we need to do is stop asking the question so that we can feel at peace. We need to stop constantly digging, 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 digging so that we can allow the transformation to happen in its own time and pacing. Being okay with your own pace and timing. Stop paying attention to the outside. Being okay with everybody's, everybody's own pacing and timing. And when you give yourself that freedom, you'll give everybody else that freedom as well. That's the Uranian component and the tension will break. And then we've got this beautiful new moon in Sagittarius, which is coming up two weeks from now and things are going to look a lot brighter. So it's okay. Uranus will strike with an unexpected event that you might perceive to be disruptive, that's the classical language, when there is tension that needs to be broken. So, you know, not everybody has something super shocking happen. Sometimes it's just a, a realization, like you really, you really get it. You know, many people are trying to do two things at once because of how much opposition energy we have here with this Mercury and Uranus and um, Venus, the moon, the sun. This, for some people, is going to look like, you know, you're trying to feel relaxed, you're trying to do the Taurus thing, but all of a sudden there's like this crazy triggering situation and you're trying to solve all of the problems and... Uh, figure out what is potentially threatening about this situation and feeling afraid of what might go out of control and getting answers to all of these uncertainties. And you've got to stop asking the question. You just got to, got to relax. It's the test. Or maybe you are being more um, judicious about your money and you're saving more and you're being more self-reliant and you're spending less and you're being more frugal and thrifty, thrifty and efficient and more responsible about your money, Taurus. But then something surprising happens where suddenly you have to spend a lot of money or um, take on a certain amount of debt or there's some bill that comes in that you weren't expecting or there's some kind of thing that occurs that requires you to spend money that you were so focused on saving and then that gets you all anxious and ruminating and tension and pressure and take the pressure off trust god and 
Maybe you're trying to make money in a new way, but there's all these kinds of traumas and fears and like need to be certainty, need to be certain about it. That's the Scorpio part. And you're trying to figure it out and solution it. And you're putting so much pressure on yourself to hurry up now, 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 so you can escape the suffering and the intensity when really what you're meant to be learning here is to keep the peace regardless of the external circumstances and allow the change to occur in divine timing. Or maybe you're craving a deeper intimate connection and you're really looking to have something more substance in your relationships, but you're not really wanting to change anything about what you know now because it's safe and familiar. And maybe you're stagnating about that. And Uranus gives you an unexpected event that helps you realize what needs to occur now and take responsibility for what you're really feeling deep down inside that you might have been avoiding. Saturn, Uranus, Sun, and Scorpio. Anyway, that's what I think is going on here. I'm not sure I really have too much else to say. I hope this was helpful for you. I will be sharing specific horoscopes for all 12 signs on my Instagram later in the week. So you can check that out and subscribe for a dollar a month to contribute to the horoscopes that I am endlessly writing for you because it is so fun for me. Anyway, um, yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching with energy. Sarah.